welcome back to episode two of how to create a geographically based region in SimCity 4. In this episode, we're going to cover how to interpret a DEM. So where we're going to get started is with an introduction to the visual representation of that DEM. Here we have our three files we downloaded in the last video, starting with our aster produced TIFF image. That one we're just going to simply drag out of the archive, and it's going to be a single file, a tagged image file format. From our view pathfinders, we have a series of files, these HGT files, the height information files. And we're going to take that whole folder and extract the folder as a whole. From the national map, USGS, we have several files, but the only directory we need is this grdn directory. That's going to contain our ADF file. Now I have all three of those different files extracted and ready to input into a DEM reader, and we will start interpreting that data. We're going to work with primarily three programs. I'm going to show what 3DEM, the Terrain Visualization Program, is going to do for us. So we're going to get started by clicking Load Terrain Model. We can select from many different types of file formats, including GeoTIFFs and the HTT file format. So I'm going to select our HGT file and click OK. Now in our directory here, the HGT files are broken up into each separate little region. So you have 44 by 121, 44 by 122, and so on. I want to select all of those at once in order to import all of them into the map. So. You can use your shift key and select, and you can select all the files to import at a single time. And here we go. It created a shaded relief map. A shaded relief map is a visual representation of elevation information, where the scale of elevation from the lowest point to the highest point is expressed with changing shades of colors. Or in the case of a grayscale image, expressed in shades of gray starting at black for the lowest elevation to white at the highest elevation. When talking about grayscale shaded relief maps, the bit depth or amount of information that can be represented to the information plays a critical role. Consider the different bit depths, 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit as different scales that elevation can be visually presented with. The higher the number, the more different levels can be represented within that scale. To start, let's look at an 8-bit scale. Consider it as a model of stair steps. With 8 bits, 256 different levels are available to be represented. As an example, let's say we have an elevation profile of 1,024 meters. That profile will have to be represented with 256 steps instead of 1,024 when used in an 8-bit image. If the first step 0 represents our sea level at 0 meters, the next step of gray number 1 will have to represent the 4-meter mark in order to fit the full scale of 1,024 meters within its 256-step limit. This means that all height data between 0 and 4 will be compressed and flattened and set to that first level. 8-bit images take on a stair-step appearance because of this flattening and compressing of height information. It is an unfortunate byproduct of the limitations of space available within that data. While this seems extreme in the sense of a grayscale image, consider that 8-bit images only contain that limit within each color channel. There are red, blue, and green channels in a color image, and out of those 256 steps in each of those color channels, an 8-bit color image is still capable of displaying 16.7 million different color variations. Next up is a 16-bit image. It's not simply a double of the space of an 8-bit image, but rather how many powers of 2 the data is able to contain. So for an 8-bit image, we had 2 to the power of 8. But in a 16-bit image, we have 2 to the power of 16 different sample points to work with. That makes for significantly more data points. A 16-bit image has a scale from 0 to 65,535 that it can represent color and grayscale shades within each channel. So consider a 16-bit image like a slope. It has so many data points that it can represent a smooth gradation that fills in all the gaps of the 8-bit image's stair steps. Consider that same elevation profile that we were just looking at from sea level at 0 meters to 1,024 meters. Now in our 16-bit image, not only can we represent each meter with a single data point, but we can represent each tenth of a meter with a data point, and we will still only be using 1 65th of our image's total storage threshold. 
This will give our grayscale a very smooth transition across all elevation transitions to the point where visually our eyes can't fully process the transitions in resolute detail without some kind of reductive effect. The overall product of a 16-bit grayscale will be smoother than having started with an 8-bit image in the beginning. Finally, we have a 32-bit image. There isn't a strong support for viewing and manipulating images of this bit depth at this time, as a 16-bit image is already more resolute than we can really work with in its full capacity. Whereas a 16-bit image was 2 to the power of 16, a 32-bit image is 2 to the power of 32 which can make for confoundingly big numbers. That makes for over 4 billion different data points that can represent elevation. That increase in levels also comes at the cost of increased data storage size. Each jump in bit level of images roughly doubles the data size of the image. So a one megabyte 8-bit image would become a two megabyte 16-bit image and a four megabyte 32-bit image. With larger dim regions, that's a rapid scale in image file sizes. Because there are so many levels in a 32-bit image, consider a logarithmic curve. In a 32-bit image, the data set is contained within integers ranging from 0, representing black, to 1, representing white. All of the shades of gray have to fit within a single number. In each direction, as the shades approach 0 and 1, they can get significantly small without reaching either limit and retaining a functional value. At this scale, elevation can be represented by increments down to 1 100,000th of a meter without coming close to using the full data set of a 32-bit image. It's going to be very unlikely that raster dim data is recorded at this level. Further highlighting that the limiting factor at this bit depth is going to be contained elsewhere within the image production process. Returning back to 3DEM, we'll go through each of our 3DEM readers and produce a grayscale image using the information we just looked at. So down here in the corner, we have our latitude and longitude and elevation information. And as I move my mouse over various areas, it's going to reflect that for us. So anything in blue is going to be considered ocean. Um, it has a little bit of an error. It's going to write, write that as a one meter, even though it should be zero. And then as you move up towards the mountaintop, you can see the elevation profile quickly gets very high. So the 3DEM program will quickly create a simple shaded relief map for you. Next up, we have VT Builder. VT Builder is a little bit more robust. It has the ability to import additional information for roads, vegetation, water beyond just elevation data. So in order to import some elevation data, you can click on this little file folder that says IMP for import, or I can go to Layer, Import Data. I want to select Elevation Data. And we're going to import our Aster Dem TIFF here in VT Builder. And just like in 3DEM, it created a shaded relief map to represent ocean, land, and land elevation. If I go to View Options, I can select to show my elevation values in meters to keep with the information within the DEM. So down here in the bottom corner, you have your latitude and longitude, and over here will be your elevation data. So you can see as I scroll, we get to ocean at zero meters. And as I hover over land, you can see we're up to over 100. You can go up here to these highland mountains, and you can see we're over 1,000 meters. So in this shaded relief map, it's a little bit more the colors are a little bit more compact. You don't really get to color shading until you change over about every thousand meters. And finally, we have the Quantum GIS Grass GIS program. This one's a little bit more complicated. So we need to select a region or create a new one. I'm going to select to read projection and datum terms from a georeference data file. And what that's going to do is we're going to select the file we're going to view, and it's going to create the map projection the way that the map is scaled based on that file. So we're going to select our ADF file. And all that's going to do is define the terms of the way it's going to project that data. And I selected to have that data already put into my map information for me. I'm going to select my demo area and start the session. 
here on my layer manager, if I click on data, and then right click to display data. And here you can see we have a shaded relief map. Very similar to our other ones. Down here in the corner, it's going to show me my coordinates for latitude and longitude. And if I select this query raster vector data, click on a point, it's going to bring up the elevation under this value here. You can see right there at sea level, it was zero. I click over here where it's yellow at that high mountain. 1,296 meters. So you can see each of these three programs will provide a shaded relief map where color represents the difference in height. The data from our DEM is represented across two different points. It's represented with the latitude and longitude and the elevation samples. Doesn't matter what file type I used, each file type represented the same scheme. It created a shaded relief map and it just did so using different data designs. The file format is a lot less relevant as all of them will provide the same type of image for you. It's simply a matter of what is the easiest to use for the you, the user. To review, each of our DEM readers will create a colored relief map for visual identification and a grayscale image on export to represent the z-axis of elevation data across the x and y axis of latitude and longitude of a two-dimensional image. The elevation data will be converted to 8, 16, or 32 bits depending on the program's capabilities and the desired user export options. Each bit depth has limitations based on its power of 2 for how many levels of elevation it can represent. Ideally, a 16-bit image has the best trade-off for smoothness of elevation profile in a grayscale image, but an 8-bit image will be the easiest to produce and work with albeit with some loss of data. This concludes this tutorial on using DEM readers to interpret DEM data. In the next episode, we will look at the ways to manipulate this DEM data and prepare the shaded relief maps for export to a grayscale image that can be imported into SimCity 4. Thank you again for watching this tutorial series on how to create a scale-accurate region in the game SimCity 4.